If you are interested, I can show you my workplace. Hmm. Uh, remember to take your safety helmet. Those air raids always strike at night. So it is probably a good thing to stay awake late at night. No matter as a civilian or war correspondent. Feeling better now? Is anything still haunting you? Talking to you? Do you remember who you are, Isolt? Oh, yes. Doctor, I see it now. That fire... The fire that devoured everything... How could I ever forget? The raging fire consumed everything... Including Theophil. He was screaming... His mind was already gone before he ignited it all. How could he ignore everything with such disregard? Who allowed him to forget with such disregard? What I remember... I remember it all. I am from a noble family. I need to be a qualified Dittersdorf. An outstanding arcanist. A first-rate opera singer, a good sister, and a good daughter. Never forget my manners, never forget the family. But he... he got away with it. If Theophil was truly a man of courage, he should have joined the army. Or fought a duel with someone. That would have made his death more honorable. Yet, he chose to die this way. After a life of debauchery. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have told you that. It's okay, Isolt. You're doing it right. That's what therapy is for. These memories are exactly what we need. What's been deliberately repressed and ignored in the depths of your heart will manifest into words and help you reconnect with your emotions. Soon your symptoms of hysteria will diminish. Don't be afraid. You can talk to me about anything. In the name of my family and the Hippocratic Oath. I will keep things between you and me. Everything will be a secret. Our secret. Our secret. <laughs> Klingt wunderbar. Ich erinnere mich an dieses Zimmer. Das Zimmer war übermäßig hell. Ich konnte mich nie an Glühbirnen gewöhnen und bevorzugte das sanftere Licht von Kerzen. Meine Mutter hatte immer eine weiße Kerze brennen, wenn sie mich beim Zubeck gehen sah. Was ist mit dieser Kerze passiert? Jemand hat sie umgeworfen. Ha! Das freche Balk. Mein dunkelhaariger Bruder. Er zündete die Kerze an. 
setzte das Zimmer in Brand und verbrannte all seine Gemälde. Er rannte zu mir. Sein Körper brannte. In seiner Hand war eine Waffe. Ich sagte Theophil einmal, er sei kein Genie wie Weininger. Sich eine Kugel zu geben, werde ihn nicht berühmt machen. Nur ein Debüt hinterlässt Eindruck. Die folgenden Shows sind langweilige Wiederholungen. Er lachte. In der Tat, zu viele haben sich für Ruhm erschossen. Nur durch leidenschaftliches Feuer würde die Welt sich an mich erinnern. Ich verabschiedete mich von ihm und ging nach unten, um mit den Damen zu sprechen. Lucio tränkte den Holzboden und tropfte in meinen Becher. Tropf. Ich ging nach oben und fand Theophil in einer Blutlache liegen. Ein Revolver lag in seiner Hand. Ach, wie sein Zylinder wie Musik klickte. Ich hob mein Kleid an, damit das Feuer wie Wasser herabrollen konnte. Ich lehnte mich über das Loch an seiner linken Schleff und sagte, Theophil, wo ist dein Feuer? Theophil setzte sich auf und sagte, Isolde, wo ist deine Waffe? Ihre Waffe? Meine Waffe? Meine Waffe! Ich erinnere mich jetzt... Ich hielt die Waffe die ganze Zeit. Theophil stand im Arbeitszimmer. Die Flammen im Hütten, den Balken, die Decke, alles. Was? Er rannte auf mich zu, schreiend vor Schmerzen. Er brannte. Die Hitze trocknete mir die Augen aus. Er stand in Flammen und rannte auf mich zu. Doktor, er rannte auf mich zu. Tief einatmen. Ganz langsam ausatmen. Es ist alles in Ordnung, Isolde. Ich bin hier bei Ihnen. Sie sind sicher. Und dann hörte ich einen Schuss. Ich, ich kann mich nicht erinnern. Der Abzug war schwer zu ziehen. Nach dem Schuss ist es mir aus der Hand gerutscht. Ich habe Tefel getötet. Es war ich. Ich verdiene es nicht, das Recht zu haben, an seiner Beerdigung teilzunehmen oder seine Gedenkerstellungen zu veranstalten. Ich verdiene keine Sympathie und Freundlichkeit. Ich hätte in dem Feuer verbrennen sollen. Ich hätte sterben sollen. Alles ist gut. Ich bin weder Richter noch Polizist, Isolde. Ich bin einfach nur Ihr Arzt. Ich werde Ihnen treu bleiben, egal was Sie denken, wer Sie sind. Ihr Leben war in Gefahr. Jeder hätte dasselbe getan. Es war nicht Ihre Schuld, Isolde. 
Sie waren einfach verängstigt. Schämen Sie sich nicht für Ihr instinktives Verhalten. Seien Sie versichert, Ihr Geheimnis ist bei mir sicher. Nach Dr. Freud ist das Akzeptieren Ihrer Dunkelheit der erste Schritt zur Befreiung. Es erfordert Mut und ist nicht einfach zu tun. Die meisten Menschen schaffen es nicht. Aber sie haben das sehr gut gemacht. Habe ich eine gute Arbeit geleistet? Ja, eine ausgezeichnete Arbeit. Doktor! This is as far as I can walk you. You have to host a ceremony tomorrow and Tosca's next week. Vienna won't forgive me if I take up too much of your time. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Like you said, the night breeze will do me some good. I heard from Heinrich that you're trying new things. I read his stage design. The style of Berlin expressionism he adopted is quite refreshing. I have to admit, he became a little strange after his trip to Berlin. But his passion for art didn't change, nor did his love for his fellow Viennese. I appreciate his hard work as well. But, sadly, the Vienna Court Opera didn't approve our performance application. So we turn to the Wiener Volksoper. Well, I'm not surprised. Understand that Mr. Mahler is the artistic director of the Vienna Court Opera, and even he could not bring Salome to the stage. Those boring, stale old-timers will never approve of new forms of art. They always expect something predictable and unvarying. The same old pieces and settings. I'm the reason Tosca can't get the permission. Because I, the star, am a medium, a maniacal arcanist. Oh no, that's not it. In Vienna, the great composers, conductors and performers, almost all of them have been arcanists. Wiping out the unique talents of arcanists and their artistic contributions would be like setting fire to the cultural tapestry of Viennese society. Oh, sorry, a flood. A flood is better. They consider it a desecration of the stage. When a singer is channeling, she's essentially asking a spirit to possess her and speak directly through her. Thus, she becomes the character in the opera. People will question the authenticity of the voice. Is it still the singer's own voice? Or is it a fraud? No, Isolde. They think that because they know nothing about performance. Not even the slightest thing. The nature of the stage is to be someone else. If they're so intent on the presentation of the true self, the mayors in my clinic would like a word with them. It is an actor's job to become another person. On stage, in a fictional world, they briefly trick our eyes into thinking it's real. And to achieve that, we rehearse rigorously, through sweat and pain. We take care of the music, the costumes, the settings, the lights. Your gift helps you do this better than others. That's all. But I use the arcane skills of the Dittersdorf family. I couldn't have done these things without them. What if an arcanist's talent for art is also a curse? Maybe I'm just a fraud, Doctor. I'm propped up by my illness and... Once it's cured... 
my talent will be gone with it. It's not like that, Isolde. Using your talents is not cheating. We're arcanists, but before we allow ourselves to be defined by that word, who are we, really? If an arcanist grew up on a lonely island, she wouldn't see herself as an arcanist, but as a person like you, like me, like everyone. Doctor. But you know, the truth is, when I look at a crowd, I don't see any arcanists. All I see is our people, with different talents, trapped in life, their selfhoods ground smooth until they're indistinguishable from the crowd. Humans celebrate their flaws, yet they persecute our gifts. They control the narrative. They define our gifts as diseases, our talents as weaknesses, and our bloodlines as curses. If we're cured, they're just another face in the crowd. But if we live on with our diseases, we're forever ill, forever afflicted. We arcanists have to live in such a world, where we survive through suffering. Look at this city. This most enlightened, tolerant city. Under the sweet surface of the Sachertorte lies powder and poisonous vine. Arcanists are recognized for their artistic abilities. Nothing more. We hold no parliamentary seats, no professional titles, and no professional credentials. We are exiled and marginalized. Our only voice in the culture is to be decoration. Because decoration impacts nothing. The restrictions and discrimination against Arcanists are worsening by day. First, we had to register with the government. Then we needed residence permits. And now, permission to cast Arcane skills. And we can do nothing but tolerate, stay polite and dignified. Be a good Arcanist, show no signs of instability. Because we're supposed to stay rational, otherwise we're animals. But people are complicated. They can't stay rational forever. As Dr. Freud said, they're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. You might be sick. I might be too. But the truth is, this whole society is sick. You can't just treat the individual and ignore the bigger picture. It was the repression of irrational desires that allowed the diseases to spread in our time. In this case, the people on that island are much freer than we are. You mean that mysterious island? I hear gold is in the ground there. Remember the lady from the Foundation? Yes. Why? She said the Arcanists on that island are not lunatics, and they're living a life free of restrictions. Doesn't that sound great? If we could form our own society, like those artistic associations, and have control over our own production and labor... This must have been some kind of enlightenment. I can almost see it. They'll show us another way of life, a kingdom free of oppression. To help them is to help ourselves. And that's also what your exhibit is about. Me? No, I'm not as great a person as you. But you are working for a great cause. Isolde, my friend, I've shared my dream with you, and I hope one day it'll become your own, until the day when everyone shares the same dream. Our society needs a revolution. A radical surgery. We urgently need a new vision to reunite us at the dawn of the new century. Like the secession in art history, 
We need a succession of Arcanum to distinguish us from hysterical lunatics, street peddlers, and con artists. We need a new dream, a new saga. We need to reinvent ourselves and become a new people. No more repression, only the full embrace of our primal desires. That's why your work has not been in vain. From Tailfield's art exhibition to the promotion of new art. Do not doubt yourself. You're helping a great cause. Thank you, Doctor. This is the first time anyone said that to me. I would bear that in mind. Your words in the breeze of night have been stirring. Can you walk with me a little longer? I'd like to hear more things about the cessation you mentioned, so that I can prepare my speech for tomorrow's ceremony. Yes, it is my pleasure. Would you like a walk to the Wiener Folk Supper? I think they put up new posters. than the Foundation's gates. Lighting needs to be appropriate.
no day and night in the air raid shelter. But it's not depressing. Sometimes, not frequently, people enjoy the afternoon tea in the dark. So do I. Taking photos of them sometimes makes me feel much better. Warning, warning, the puppy is fleeing the scene at its maximum speed. Lighting needs to be appropriate. Too bright will cause overexposure. And the films should be saved for sensational moments. air raids always strike at night, so it is probably a good thing to stay awake late at night, no matter as a civilian or war correspondent. strike at night. Speak.
victory. Okay, but what does it mean to us? I mean, what does it prove? Lighting needs to be appropriate. Too bright will cause overexposure. And the films should be saved for sensational moments. That was a night in 1971, a night with pouring rain. In that rain, the communication center of Zeno lost contact with the Green Lake campsite. But wasn't it a story? I am kind of attracted indeed. Staying here is really not a wise choice for you. It's our rights to stay here. You can't just expel us. Someone is passing messages to us through these notes. We have been with a butcher whose identity is unknown to all of us. Like the story of Xeno Youth Force. We are in real danger now. are multiplying. Things are getting worse.
I'm here for a worn tooth. Woman, woman! Get moving! Candy. That's right! Must pass it! That's right! Must pass it! Huh, like the light up! That hurts, huh? Team stars. <laughs> Plan A. That's right. Must pass it. Great. The 
show's on, pounds. It will all be fine. Time waits for no one, even for a great thing.